Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Marion White, and with me is my co-host since 1991, 27 years, Ken Bialo. So nice to see you, Ken. How, how could it be 27 years if, if I'm only 23? <laughs> Isn't that There's something amazing? something wrong with your math. There's something <laughs> definitely wrong with your math. Well, I just want to point out you served as mayor in the village of Larchmont for four years, and you were, were trustee on the Larchmont Village Board for 11. So you have put in a lot of personal service at no remuneration whatsoever. None. Some would and call you, you crazy. And you? <laughs> are, are we going to talk about you? Can I talk about Can I brag about you? Well... It's weak trustee compared the, to you. Trustee on the Village Board for two terms, and then the esteemed <laughs> chair of the late great Republican Party of the Village of Larchmont. Which probably most people don't remember. You'd have to be pretty old to remember. Well, I think most of the people <laughs> who live in the village now are too young to know there is a Republican Party, because in their world, there's only the two. Good point. Yes, I would say so. Well, we are really excited. We always love to open our show when we can talk about Furniture Share House mm -hmm. and its wonderful executive director, Catherine Bialo. And you said that the gala mm -hmm. has been set yes. for November 2nd. Yes. Um, from, that's a Friday, mm -hmm. um, starting at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. 6 and or 6.30. I, I can't remember. Okay. Cocktails oh. and bidding. <laughs> Those go together very well. Well, you know, it's a fundraiser, so you got to raise funds. Yes. Well, um, we will, as we can get more information from the executive director, yes. uh, we will love to uh, pass it on to um, the, our audience. Well, I think we should say to the audience right now, okay. this being June something or other of 2018, that they should grab their calendars. Right now. Oh, oh wait, wait a second. What? Most of these folks don't have calendars. Oh. But you have to punch up your calendar on some right. device. On some device. A personal assistant. Find November 2nd, 2018. <laughs> it's way down. It's Be like sure months it's and right months here. from here. Yeah, get everything right. <laughs> just write in there, Furniture Share House Gala. Next to that, put, it's a fundraiser. Silly. <laughs> a fun fundraiser. It's a fun, it's it is a fun, nice. fun, it yes. is a fun fundraiser. So. Uh, just put that in your books, and uh, and everything will be fine. And then from here to uh, to November, you'll be. And to every time you look at your calendar, whether it's mine, which is handwritten, or yours, <laughs> I'm a is, handwritten person too. Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> or it's on your computer or whatever it is. You'll be thinking about this, which yes. is important. So and, good and then come. Yes, yes. Well, we. I don't know the ticket price yet, but it's there. Uh, Furniture Share House events. The ticket price is not high by comparison to many events, yes, some of which are $500, some of which are $750. There was that dinner at the, uh, at the Met, at the Metropolitan Museum. Oh, how much I was think, that? I think that was $30,000, <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong by three or four zeros. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, this is a, a nice, friendly uh, Friendlier dialogue. and less expensive. Yes. yes. And closer to home. And much closer to home. <laughs> um, we do want to congratulate LMC TV on its 20th, 28th annual awards night. And Ken, we were actually nominated in the best series, Larchmont Today. We were one of five. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one of 10 or 20. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty impressive. How many series are there? Well, I think more Six. than five. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll have to do some further <laughs> yeah, research yes, on exactly that. Right Put no next to us <laughs> over here. Um, and so we just, uh, the most important thing that matters to us is that we were thanking our wonderful crew. Um, Want to read that? Our ad, thanks to LMC TV, to our talent, Lisa and Austin Curley, Misa Moak, and John Baldwin, and to our leaders, Dina Schumacher and Sunday. You are awesome. That's what you, that's right there. And it says Larchmont Today, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. That's how we feel. So we were nominated. This is a great event, right? 28th annual. Oh, yeah. Right? It's and, a lot of fun. And we were nominated. How'd we do? Well, we lost. Oh. <laughs> so disappointing. But Terror TV won. I understand that's pretty good. Terror. 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 Yes. 
Like not Terra, like not it, as in no, T-E-R-R-A. No, like T -E -R -R -A. scary. T-E-R-R-A, okay. All right. So congratulations so, to congratulations them. Congratulations to all the winners. Oh, and then there is one thing. Um, news has come out that the uh, chief executive officer of LMC TV, Eric Lewis, is going to be retiring after 19 years Ooh, with LMC TV. 19 years, wow. Yes. I know you guys go back a long way, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, Joe Windish before Eric. And he has, uh, next time we'll go over more of what he says, that so he has plans for what he's going to be doing. He's very excited about having some free time. Uh, but he, um, he certainly made a very important mark on LMC TV. He so, certainly did. So best of luck, Eric, and stop by often. Now, I know we lost here. We did. But I found this. This is an election pencil mm -hmm. from 1991 mm -hmm. that lets re-elect Judge Clifford, elect Ken Bialo trustee, and elect Marion White trustee. So we lost here, but we won here. Oh, we won. Oh, now I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go back 27 years to feel better. But this is a relic. <laughs> it is a relic. This is a relic. You think the eraser still works? Probably a little dried out. Yeah. Well, it was a better eraser than the ones that came along later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this that's why they kept it probably was the eraser was good. <laughs> this will soon be an antique, as will we. <laughs> wow. Okay. Isn't that fun? It's just great. Did you get a close-up of this, guys? Yes, Missy did. did. Okay. It doesn't have the date on it, which is too bad. But we, is never, we know yes. because Judge Clifford, that was the only time that we ran with Judge Clifford. And what an honor. And it I was. remember what he said. Oh, my goodness. More people broke the speed limit taking people to the train. And yes, <laughs> it's certainly true. This was, I think, his fifth term. Okay. He, and he was reelected. And this was his fifth term, and he, I remember him lecturing us and in, in, a very kind, in a very kind and gentle yes. way about how you did this. How you, know, you run. When, what, well, how you, what, what you do and what you say when you ring the doorbells. Remember? And he said, you got to walk around. you got to ring every doorbell in the village. It's, and then we had a map of the village, <laughs> and we color in. With you were the yellow. one that colored. I could never get oh. it right. Oh, well, I'm sure I got it wrong also. But <laughs> nevertheless, we colored things in to say that we had covered this particular territory uh -huh. or that particular territory. I do remember that. And he was adamant that you had to go out and say hello to everybody. And, and that, that was, was the old days when people were actually home <laughs> and would answer the door. <laughs> well, but it was before emails and computer right. stuff. And so right. you really didn't. It was difficult to communicate, even though we had a newspaper then, which we don't have now. Right. It was still pretty difficult to communicate with people, and it certainly was impossible to get the message out to everybody unless you went to every door. I mean, and we did that. Right. Go to every door. Ask them what they thought, how things were going. Yes. What could be better. And we gave them pencils. Sometimes they said, well, well I have seven kids, so we give it. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, here's seven pencils. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly there was one left over, so yeah. we, <laughs> really we didn't great. deprive anyone. Judge Clifford was, was a great man. He yes. really was, and he was, he, was a, he was a great friend. You couldn't have run the first time with anybody who was more, exper more gentle and yet firm uh, and experienced than him. He really he helped us along. Well, we were we, very lucky. We were lucky. And we I had a sweep. Lucky was right. <laughs> <laughs> sweep. <laughs> Well, talking about politics, why don't we jump to the present and Governor mm. Cuomo? Mm. Ouch. <laughs> Governor Cuomo. Oh, God. Well, he's come up and some other states also have come up with some ideas about how to outwit the Internal Revenue Service in the 2018 taxes. Yes, and you know, in, in speaking of not having a newspaper, <laughs> I am staring at our not newspaper, the, yes. the edition from June 1 of this year. And the right-hand column above the fold, most important column in the paper, right? Yes, it is. Is, is written by an, an alterably, just dedicated, dedicated Democrat operative <laughs> who 
Instead of saying the IRS could nix New York's tax plan gambit, and everybody I hope knows what we're talking about. We're talking about the limitation on the individual, on the itemized deductions to $10,000 for a pair right. filing jointly for state and local taxes. That was enacted in the tax code that became effective January 1, 2018. And from that time forward, the high tax states, so I don't want Governor Cuomo to occupy the spotlight in this particular okay. cynical commentary so by New himself. New Jersey, Connecticut, New and Jersey, California. Connecticut, California, Massachusetts. Where else? Probably Illinois, although I don't actually know that Illinois ever actually collects their taxes because <laughs> the governors are in jail. I mean, you just don't know what them. Well, they collected Illinois, my right? they they collected my mother's taxes. They? <laughs> yeah, they did get did those. They come around individually and say, <laughs> "Mrs. White, can I have your money?" Anyway. Governors of the high-tax states uh, attempting to seize the moment to resist yet again. They are so good at resisting. Uh, the President Trump and the initiative of the Congress to try and figure out how to fix the tax system so that, for the most part, people had lower rates and corporations for sure in who compete worldwide for business, U.S. competing against the EU countries, competing against the Chinese and so on, uh, had a more level playing field for the taxes, for their income taxes, and could repatriate some money that was... Well, we're forced to yeah, <laughs> pay taxes to, whether it came here or not. Exactly right, which they weren't before, which is a very good thing. Anyway. Governors of the high-tax states thought that they were being, the, tax, the high-tax states were being singled out for unfair treatment, which I have absolutely no doubt they were, because the rest of the country- Because <laughs> they're was, all Democrats. Yeah, well, no, 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 but the rest of the country just tired. And for years, this has been going on, this battle has been going on for years and years and years, tired of subsidizing the spending in the high-tax states. Right. Because if you can deduct it, that means you're not paying the full amount of the of the uh, income tax that others are paying where they're in low tax states. You get a deduction of $5,000 because you live in Wyoming. People in New York, I don't know, get a deduction of $40,000 or $50,000. So to the extent the federal budget is what it is, some people are financing, in effect, the high tax states by allowing them to, to deduct these large numbers when they only get to deduct small numbers. So that was been, that's been a gripe for a long time in, in the Midwest, and that's what the new tax code provides for. Although, even with this, the personal exemptions were raised rather dramatically, and the actual effect on people, even in the high tax states, is not universally the same across the board. I'm not a tax lawyer, you're not a tax person, but this is pretty much the way it's written, and it's pretty much the way it's explained in the professional publications, and I have no reason at the moment yet to doubt that. Anyway, this headline doesn't say the IRS could nix New York's tax plan gambit. It says Trump's IRS, as if to say the president is to be blamed for having an internal revenue service whose job is to collect taxes for having an internal revenue service whose job <laughs> is to collect taxes. Well, and aren't most of the employees still left over from Obama? Well, they're all... I don't know about the higher ups, the political appointees, but certainly the staff, the, the non-political staff, the people who hire in because they like accounting or they want to learn how to be a, right. sir, a, a revenue agent, then they go out and they make a living as tax lawyers or tax accountants or whatever. I doubt seriously that they're that they've changed very much with the with the turnover at the administration. Right. But the point of this article, aside from blaming Trump in the headline, which was just Idiotic. This David McKay Wilson, just absolutely idiotic. <laughs> just idiotic. Gratuitous. Yeah. I mean, really unnecessary, unreasonable. Aside from that, what it says is the New York program that was put together is liable to be rejected by the Internal Revenue Service, which to me would make absolute sense on account of their job is to collect taxes. And if the tax law has changed so they're supposed to collect more from people they were collecting less from, they're unlikely to say, 
Oh no, I'm reading the tax code I in a different way. I made a charitable way. deduction to the state of New York. <laughs> this charity, they, 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 they came up with, and this was Governor Cuomo, who is, I think, thinks he's the leader of the resistance movement. Yes. Right? <laughs> got a lot of press. Darth Vader there. Yes, oh yes. yes. I've seen it when the tax code was enacted, he got a lot of press getting right in front of all the cameras and saying, we won't stand for this here in New York. We are a high tax state and we love it. I don't know who he was talking for. <laughs> sort of a dope, right? We love high taxes. I don't think that's right. I don't think people love high taxes, but when you have him for a governor, you're stuck with it, right? <laughs> that's what you get. That's what you get. So anyway, he got the centerfold in, in, the, in, the, in, in the Daily News and in the Post and in the, in the uh, New York Times and all the New York press. Oh, this is great. This is, what's the program, <laughs> Governor? What well, the program is, we're going to pretend like, we're going to pretend like municipalities are charities. <laughs> and so you will write a check to the municipality and call it a charitable contribution. And we're going to fix the law here in New <laughs> York me. so that that will be treated as a charitable contribution, even though, even though, there isn't a prayer under the Internal Revenue Code <laughs> of turning the financing for local municipalities into a charity. And by the way, if it's a charity, I don't want to contribute. So <laughs> most charities are volunteer. I guess you're right. <laughs> you know, this would be silly. You have to contribute to this charity. What charity? How is that a charity? Anyway, so that was one branch of this okay. silliness. And the other branch of the silliness was that uh, employers in New York would have their taxes raised so that they could pay the state instead of their employees paying the state on their income, an income tax, what is it in New York now, six, seven, eight, or nine no, percent, something like, like that. Eight something. Eight something, right? The employers would pay that piece for the employees so that the net checks that the employees would get would be smaller than their checks before the tax reform. Now that's a great political ploy because you could say to all these people who are getting killed by their employers, oh, this is the result of the tax reform. See, I told you you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna, <laughs> right? you weren't gonna have right, any more money right. in your pocket. You have less money in your pocket. See, see, I was right, we Dems are right and the silly Republicans are all wrong. <laughs> Well, Good point. And, and so that's a different, that has different issues associated with it. And I'm sure that the employers in New York probably didn't think that was a good idea. I'm sure <laughs> the, tech, the, the, the shareholders of the companies don't think that's a good idea. There's, once you allow the state to do that, it's just a slippery slope before the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You slide down that hill and the numbers go like this. Right. Because the state now has its hand in the company's treasury. What could a politician <laughs> want more than to have a hand <laughs> in private industry's treasury, really? Just to have it in there and say, well, these people have to pay more. You, companies, have to pay more because where we've lowered our income tax on the individual because it's no longer deductible, but this is a deductible expense to you, paying taxes to me instead of the individuals doing it. So this is the silly plan that these guys came up with. And, you know, center, front and center in the cameras. And this headline above the fold on the right column of the page, Trump's IRS could nix a New York tax plan gambit as if it was the first, he was the first person to think of this. <laughs> this fellow says, oh my goodness, it might not work. Every, every professional publication that I have seen about the subject has said it has very little, very dim prospects, <laughs> very dim prospects of actually working. And so we have the non-newspaper that runs this important column, <laughs> but the truth is, for all the publicity that the governor has gotten amongst the hardcore Democrats, particularly in the sandwich in lower Westchester and right. out on Long Island and in New York City, right, the hardcore, these people, you know, I, I think maybe thought there was something to this. I hope that they were a little more cynical than that <laughs> and really appreciated this is not a newsworthy subject. It was a silly idea and it's bound to fail. And the result of all that is 
the reality that the high tax states are going to have people moving out because they don't want to pay the taxes. They will make some other place their home so they don't have to pay New York taxes, at least on the income side. On the property tax side, the only answer is to move out and close up your residence here. Well, didn't you say you had the impression that um, houses at the higher end were not, um, had not had the same kind of price increase over the last year yes. as the lower end yes. of the housing? and I think there are a few. The, the, the data that I have read from one of the real estate brokers in Larchmont about town and two villages right. seems to reflect that the higher end, where the taxes are, as we say, quite substantial, are having a, um, a, a bear market, fewer sales, lower prices, than houses at the more central points in the, in the, in the, uh, in the value scale, which seem to be doing pretty much what other counties around are doing, which is a, a few percentage points increase in the prices, the average right. price. Year over year. Year over year. So today's Wall Street Journal, was it today's? No, it's Friday, June 8th. Tax laws have buyers on the move, says the headline in this particular article. And it does point to the fact that the Tax Foundation, a, I'm just going to read this, a pro-growth tax policy nonprofit, the six states with the highest state and local tax deductions as a percentage of income, were, not are, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, California, Maryland, which is a Maryland. swamp. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't it's know a that. swamp with all of the people from D.C. And Oregon, where I thought people were smoking dope and not paying tax. <laughs> this was news to me. So, um, for those of us who live around here and who have lived around here for a long time, some, some people were able to take advantage of deductions at the, in, the, in the higher uh, of, of, the, of the income taxes and of the property taxes. Some were not, depends on where you are in the alternative minimum right. tax and all that right. fancy so it's, stuff. It's not really clear just by what we're talking about how any individual is, is affected because Absolutely. of the alternative minimum tax. Yes, a and the, the larger pers personal exemptions under the, under the reform tax code. I think it went from what, 10 to 20? 24. 10 to 24. So you get the deduct. You get, a de if, you, if you're filing jointly, you get $28,000 of, if you will, deductions, sort of in quotes, that you didn't have before. So that might make up for what you've lost in the SALT deduction, or it might not, depends on where you are. Right. Went. In any event, the Wall Street Journal, and I'm sure other journals around the country that are thinking about this, have taken a, 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 taken a, a a flyer at this and said that the tax laws have buyers on the move. I didn't see anything in here that was scientific, but it was sort of the logical outcome of not being able in the high tax states to get the full benefit of the deductions because of the $10,000 cap well, that you used to get, maybe. Yeah. You know, the, one of the problems is that parts of the tax law um, passed at the end of 2017 regulations haven't come out right. and people aren't really sure what's happening. So, you know, everyone's trying to figure out, well, what will I look like this year? But there's no, in areas, there's no way to know at this point in time. Can't do a hard calculation, taking guesses. Right. So, I, I, I put this under the heading of Governor Cuomo because he made a really big deal about it and it was, so, it was such a vast oversimplification that it was hard to imagine that the newspapers <laughs> would latch on to that as a reason for taking his picture and putting him on the front page, but they did. <laughs> well, here's a good front page picture. Ah. Julie Killian, a um, quite an admirable uh, politician, and uh, she served in Rye, is that correct? For six years on the council. Yeah, so uh, and she feels very strongly about particular important issues, and she stands up for what she thinks is right. And she is running for, she has been selected by Mark Molinaro, who is going to be the Republican candidate for governor and was nominated by the state convention. Oh, okay. He selected her, Julie Killian from Rye, to run as his lieutenant governor candidate. 
And the same issue of the newspaper, the non-newspaper, reads, Lieutenant Governor Cant LT Gov candidate, Julie Killian shuns labels, which is probably, my sense of her is that it's probably a good description. I, Kate and I walk with her in the Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade back in, in, in March. And it was an enjoy, you know, it's about an hour and a half from one end to the other. And it was very enjoyable, and we got to know her, and she's really terrific. I didn't know her educational background. It turns out she's a chemical engineer. <laughs> my God. <laughs> From Notre Dame. She could be out making a lot of money. Oh, my goodness. A chem, a chem E. That, that was the toughest major, <laughs> right? I mean, that was really a tough major. Well, how wonderful that someone of that caliber is willing to bring her brains to uh, try to improve uh, New York State. So, um, there's a whole article, this is in the June 1st, yeah, June 1st edition of the, the uh, journal Non-News. But this was <laughs> it, but it was, and it, it was, I, I can't pronounce the reporter's name, but it's this whole page, part of the front page, and a whole page in the back, and it's pretty detailed. And I think she's a very, nice person and I think what she stands for is kind of a mixed bag of some things on the conservative side and some things that are not on the conservative side of things. And she's got her special interest in education and in uh, parents of children who are challenged in school is a special interest. And so, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, we'll see what the campaign brings. But this is a very good article and it was something that I think uh, the reporter, whose name I cannot pronounce, should take credit for, and it surprised me to find oh. this in this newspaper. Oh, okay. The article well, surprised too bad me. you can't pronounce her name. <laughs> we think she did a very good job on this. I she or he. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, that's good. Um, well, we are getting into the election season. We have about a minute left. And uh, that means emotions are going to heat up again. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure emotions ever really took much of a break, actually. Not around here. But, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, well, I'll look forward to talking to you as we um, well, we look, no, the election. No, no, we look for, I, I look forward to hearing what the candidates have to well, say. Well, maybe Julie could uh, come on our show one time. Well, that's entirely possible, I suppose. The... Um, the race, I guess, will start in earnest after the Democrat candidate is selected by a primary, if, the, oh. if more than one candidate <laughs> lasts through the summer. I think the primary is in September. Okay. My guess is the governor, Governor Cuomo, will continue uh, his streak. He will be the candidate. And uh, I don't know how he'll fare this election. We'll see, obviously, how things move along. But the whole tax thing was just... A, in my mind, just Well, that's people's sil chance yeah. to, uh, to say they don't like it. Yep. Well, um, take care. Well, we'll see you next month. Yes. And uh, thanks for watching. And happy Fourth <laughs> of July. Coming up? Yes, it yes, is. Fourth of July. Enjoy the fireworks. Also, Flag Day is coming up, yes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Day after tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Happy Flag Day, too. And thank you very much to all the uh, talent that's behind the cameras. That's where the real spark is. <laughs>